In the early days of European settlement, the Taruheru was described as a wide, deep river, which was navigable upstream as far as Makaraka. Raupo and flax flourished in the riverside swamps where weka and pūkeko were abundant. In certain places on the banks grew the scented moss which gave these waters their name. In 1831, the trader John Williams Harris purchased land beside the Turanganui River. Traffic on the Taruheru increased, flax being one of the first commodities to be exported. Around this lower reach of the river, the vegetation was not so lush. It was mainly manuka, kanuka and fern, which was variously described as hefty scrub or first-class land, depending on what use the observer had in mind for it. The early trading and farming activities were disrupted by the political unrest of the late 1860s. Once peace had been restored, the cluster of settlement that had developed at the junction of the rivers began to grow. The Wiley family moved into the house across the river from the township. Although isolated by the river, they were still within easy waving, swimming, paddling or even shouting distance of the new township. The waka pulled up onto the riverbank is much the same as a car in a driveway today. In January 1876, after four days of torrential rain, there was a major flood which became the yardstick by which other events were judged. The Wileys had moved by then, but whoever was in the cottage would have had a spectacular view as the swollen river surged past. The cottage, strategically placed on the rise, escaped the flooding. The fences were also undamaged. It is quite likely that they were made of pūreri wood, which had been milled at Makauri. William King opened Poverty Bay's first steam sawmill here in 1872. Kahikatea, pūreri and mātai were milled, and rafted down the river. This 1877 image shows his wharf, nearly opposite the cottage, adjacent to the present Peel Street Bridge. By 1881, the trees Wiley had planted were blocking the river view, but there would have been no escape from the thump of piles being driven down through the mud. The construction of the Taruhiru Bridge had begun. Ownership of the Whataupoko block had passed to the New Zealand Native Land Settlement Company. In a scheme driven largely by the solicitor William Rees, they intended to open the block for the development, and to do so, they needed to provide access to it. The bridge was eventually opened at the end of 1881, but protracted disputes meant that it was not used until matters were settled in court. Some years later, it was taken over by the Gisborne Borough Council. A swing mechanism enabled a section of the bridge to open and allow the passage of river traffic. Other bridges built across the river also had to make allowance for river traffic. In 1881, the bridge at the Botanical Gardens had to be raised in the middle to accommodate the Taruhiru Freezing Works river traffic. The Roebuck Road Bridge, constructed in 1908, had a drawbridge style of mechanism. The Derby Street Bridge, built in 1918, was high enough for vessels to pass underneath. The original Taruheru bridge was referred to as Rees Folly, as nobody could believe that people would want to live on this side of the river. But the suburb soon became a popular place to live. It wasn't long before the cottage inhabitants had neighbours, although they were screened from them by original planting. A couple of years after the Taruheru bridge opened, Charles Dunlop purchased the cottage and adjacent land. In 1886, the cottage was moved to face Stout Street to make way for the Dunlop's new house. In later years, people looked back on the 1880s as a time when Our generation learned to swim, handle a boat, fish, etc. The Terahira was then a clear, clean, sweet-smelling tidal stream, teeming with fish from which came the main supply of the fish diet for the town. Boating, picnicking parties, as well as eel-bobbing or flounder-spearing at night, were then a feature of the social life in Gisborne. There were many boats, canoes and Maori dugouts all along the river. A popular venue for picnics was the Tehapara Creek, which flowed into the Taruheru River. The opening of the boating season had been one of the highlights of the social calendar since the Gisborne Rowing Club was established in 1874 
and this continued to be the case for many years. In 1889, Nelson Brothers Limited built the Taruhiru Freezing Works to process sheep and cattle. Situated just over six kilometres upstream, the works would have a considerable impact on the way the river was used. Once production was underway, the frozen carcasses were brought down the river on barges towed by tugs. Had a fleet of shallow draft barges operating from the Taruhiru Freezing Works, all of these craft were flush deck in order to pass under the bridges and were tiller steering. When approaching the bridge spans, the steersman lay down on the deck for safety. The tug had a hinged funnel and the skipper was in a cockpit and used a wheel. The lighter strings had to work on the tides and they went up and down regardless of the time. Apart from the increase in river traffic, there was a deterioration in the water quality and what was referred to as the Taruhiru stench. Nelsons were often blamed for this, but a dairy factory, a sausage casing factory, and a wool scouring works also discharged into the river, as did the town drains and runoff from the farms. The silting up of the river was also thought to be part of the problem. The effects of deforestation was becoming apparent. The shoaling became such a problem for Nelsons that they had to dredge the river in an attempt to keep the channel deep enough for navigation. In 1906, the Taruhiru, swollen with flood water which had overflowed from the Waipawa River, carried away not only the Nelsons Bridge, but also their dredge, and the two came hurtling down the river. Luckily, although they did some damage to one of the footbridges, they were able to be secured before they went on to demolish the Taruhiru Bridge. By now the bridge was showing its age. Over the years there had been several collisions involving tugs and barges, while the actual superstructure had also suffered. The bridge was too narrow for the volume of traffic it had to carry, and consequently there were frequent accidents. Occasionally a horse or even a mob of cattle would bolt across it, much to the alarm of other road users. It was time for a new bridge. In November 1923, the new bridge, the present Peel Street Bridge, was finally opened. When it did, it also carried a tram line to extend Gisborne's tramway services up Ormond Road to Mangapapa. In spite of Nelson Brothers' efforts to keep the river channel clear, the Taruhiru works were closed in 1923, and the operation was transferred to Waipawa. The river became the preserve of sporting and recreational users. In May 1948, heavy rain throughout the district caused both the Waipawa and the Mangatū rivers to burst their banks, with the result that 21,000 acres were inundated. The Taruhiru River overflowed its banks in many places, including the botanical gardens. In 1868, the Taruhiru had been described as a wide, deep river with a shingly beach on each side. Nearly 100 years later, that was no longer an accurate description. One of the most striking changes in its appearance was the Spartina grass, which has been planted with the intention of beautifying the mudflats. In March 1988, the East Coast felt the force of Cyclone Bowler. 900 millimetres of rain fell in 72 hours, with disastrous consequences. Although the major damage was in the hill country, there was also flooding in Gisborne itself. Apart from some remnants of the freezing works in Nelson Park, there's now little trace of this history. The bridges at Derby Street, the Botanical Gardens and Roebuck Road that were designed to accommodate the river traffic have all been replaced. And although waka races and rowing regattas have been followed by water skiing, canoeing, kayaking and wakaama, the connection with the water remains the same. Birds still nest along the banks. In the heart of a modern city they are still with us, a link to the river's ancient past. <laughs>